Girls Girls Gone Gone Bye Bye Bye. Why am I holding it like I'm a singer? I'm telling you, the past two times I'm sitting there holding it like (laughs) this. It's really bad. What's up, you guys? We love you so much. We love you so much. Um, So we were actually supposed to have a guest today. It didn't work out. He never showed up, so... (laughs) So we're, it's okay. we're going off the cuff today. Yeah, and we're, uh, we had we did a poll, and we have so many questions, and so we're just thinking, should we do another advice session? Like, that's what everybody it messaged us saying that they want. Yeah, I think we're going to do a little bit of that, speak a little bit on the secular music and spiritual warfare. Yeah, and I, then we also wanted to do something called Jesus for Dummies. dummies. Right? Yeah, because I was a little dummy <laughs> In before general? all this. In general, or when it comes to Jesus? Well, I did say char- char- characteristic in manuscript, so. <laughs> Cutest thing in the world. Anyways. So, uh. Yeah, I think Jesus for dummies. Jesus, yeah. How do you get with Jesus? How do you, you don't get know down? <laughs> How do you get down with that guy? <laughs> I don't know what comes out of my mouth sometimes when <laughs> we start this podcast, and this is who I am, but I will start to say, I don't know, some interesting stuff. All right, so how do you start walking with Jesus when you don't know anything? Like, say you've never grown up in in the church, you don't know anything, you don't know about God, and you don't have any Christian friends. What do you do? I would say start just sitting in the church, prayer. Yeah. I think prayer is the best, and that just leads you to bigger things like sermons, and that's what I did. I had no idea what to do. You know, when I was down bad, I was like, I don't know where to go, what to do. And there was this little church by my house and I would just go in there and sit there for hours and just pray and just ask, ask and you shall receive, really. And so I would just start praying and then I started watching videos on sermons, which completely changed my life. Mm -hmm. And then I just started praying and asking for what I wanted and all of a sudden, Everything I was praying for, he was bringing it to me. And I was like, oh, my God, is this magic? <laughs> Love you so much, Jesus. Um, but, yeah, don't you think? Yeah, I exactly. I mean, I think that if you don't know anything about God or about Jesus, I think the first place to go is into the Bible. I am number mm-hmm. one Bible thumper. Like You got me the into Bible the Bible. Because it's changed my life because it's god's word that's him that's like if you want to get close to him that's how you're going to get close to him is by reading the bible if you want your day to be completely different you wake up in the morning and read just a even just a chapter of the bible what is that bible that you told me to get that i got what did you know the name of it because people were asking about that i can put it in the it's from amazon it's just it's a new king's james version study bible and super it's, easy read it's incredible it's unbelievable it has like pictures it has explanations mm-hmm. and then it has like half of half of the bible is like the actual scripture and then the bottom half is an explanation of everything and it's so i remember when i first got that bible i opened it and for the first time i literally go I understand. Mm-hmm. I get it. Like mm-hmm. I'm reading and I feel like I can see it playing out in my mind. And I, I, I was like reading it as if I'd already read it before, whatever book I was in. Mm-hmm. And it was, I don't know, like I, I, it's really easy to read. And so I'll put it in the bio for yeah. people. Um, I, I also want to say one thing. Um, I know I talked about how I grew up Catholic. The Catholic churches were always really hard for me to understand the masses, yeah. although they're so beautiful. Um, I started going to the Christian churches, which was much more easy for me to understand the yeah. pastors and things like that. Um, but yeah, I struggle with that. Me too. With, um, okay, and let's talk about it because I don't really know. So I grew up Catholic, and I love the Catholic church. Me too. I'm gonna. Di- I want to get married in a Catholic church. I want to like. I love going to mass. I try to go every week. I go to you know. I'll go to different types of services but I try to go at least once a week um but I love the Christian church and you're not supposed to go to other churches if you're Catholic yeah I don't know but then I'm just like I don't care about the denomination it's all Jesus it's Jesus if you're teaching out of the Bible I don't care what Baptist whatever denomination you're from like you know what I mean her and I will we remember we would go to the church Sunday Christian church and then after we would go to the mass and just sit there and pray yeah exactly and I don't believe there's anything wrong with that I think so too and then I also but I so we're gonna go to 
Jerusalem this summer, you yeah. and I, and I really want to get baptized in the Jordan River. Me too. I don't think we're supposed to. Wait, can we baptize each other? <laughs> can I dunk your head? <laughs> Wait, I'm really laughing can the whole we time. Please <laughs> baptize each other. Can we have to. We? <laughs> I, I, like I look to you as I, if you know. <laughs> Morgan, would you want to baptize us? Can I baptize you, Morgan? Morgan will Morg. like dunk our heads. And, like, <laughs> I know. Morgan would be like. We'll be Morgan choking. would be ripping his jewel. Like, <laughs> if I got you. <laughs> yeah, Morgan will be ripping his jewel as he's <laughs> baptizing us. <laughs> no. But I don't know. Well, I actually told someone. I was. Because. I was talking about what was that photo that you love of Jesus? Um, the Sacred Heart. The Sacred Heart. And it's like Jesus with a little Sacred Heart. Oh, he's so and they were like, "Well, I thought you were Christian," and I was like, "I mean, it's Jesus." And he's like, yeah, "So you believe in purgatory? Is that the right word?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. That's I don't know. that's the thing. I just I don't know. I don't really pay attention. I, every time I meet a Christian, they're like, "Oh, Catholicism's stupid." Every time I meet a Catholic, they're like, "Christianity is stupid." And I'm like, "Jesus it, doesn't he- want to hear this, <laughs> right? He's like not interested in any of this stuff." So I don't know. It's interesting, but let's talk about something yeah. that has been so heavy on my heart, and that what is, is wrong with this thing. All right, <laughs> that is secular music. music. Well, I think you have a more difficult time with it because, I mean, me too. We we love our Rick Ross, right? We get down with that guy. <laughs> but it's not who I, what I expected <laughs> what you to say? say. I love Rick Ross. Right, I, like I Rick really Ross. do. All right, go I want to be his friend. <laughs> he'd, he'd probably Wouldn't he be, be fun to hang out with? Honestly, let's hit him up. Maybe he'll come on the podcast. Okay, Rick right, Ross. Never mind, you, sorry. <laughs> Anyways. This is what happens when you don't have a plan. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens when you don't have a plan. Um, I am a huge country girl, so that's really all I listen to. Yeah, you don't have a problem with that. You only really listen to rap when you're around me. And I grew up listening to hip hop. It's like my whole childhood. <laughs> I'm so sorry. What? I just. I was just picturing us in the car last weekend when we. Uh, oh, oh, oh! On the way. Okay, let me. Let's be She's honest. Solana Vegas. <laughs> we know every word. <laughs> we're on the way back from Stagecoast. I don't know what we're listening to, but me and Ariel had a moment of literal conviction at the same time as one another. We There was a lyric that was really not great, and we sang it at the top of our lungs together. We both look at each other and go, okay, let's put on a sermon. We need to put on worship. <laughs> like, it was so, we literally felt in that moment, like, what are we singing right now? This is so bad. Yeah. And our producer, Morgan, actually asked us when I when I got in, because I mentioned secular music last time. And he was like, he was like, I listen to everything that you guys say. I hope I listen to everything that you guys say. But when you said secular music and that hip hop is bad, like that really got me thinking. And I had to look up what secular music is. Mm -hmm. And so this is the thing about music, music, TV, media, movies, everything that we take in. There's something called the eye gates and the ear gates. And that's how we take in spiritual stuff, energy, whatever people want to call it. Everything is spiritual. Everything we listen to, everything we watch, everything we read, there's a spirit behind it. There's either going to be the spirit of Christ or there's going to be the spirit of Antichrist. And the thing with secular music is that there is secular music that's like not worship music that's not necessarily bad for you or demonic but there is there's songs that are clearly so unbelievably demonic if it's simply about money sex drugs hoes <laughs> sorry <laughs> hoes hey, violence we're not girls gone bible for no reason i know seriously all right if it's that stuff like that's clearly demonic it's really bad for you to take that stuff in and I have such an issue with it because Mm. I love hip-hop I love that music even the music that's not that blatantly demonic I it some of it still isn't good for you and the and the rap is so different now than it was back then like the Tupac and stuff like that yeah I will literally feel sick when I will even watching reality shows I feel like a sickness well listen to this moment that I had the other day and this was like a big deal in my life I had a huge like revelation with God so I'm in the car 
and I'm driving and I have some type of music on, I have a song on and I feel, I feel God starting to say to me, turn it off, Mm -hmm. turn it off. And I know it's him and I'm trying so hard with everything, my body to ignore him. Cause I'm like, no, like I don't, I love this. I'm not ready. It's like a death. Like I'm not ready to let go of that music. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds really dramatic, but it is like, I'm like, and so I'm ignoring him and I'm trying, I'm trying and it gets so loud that I'm like, I change it. And then I put on a worship song and then I hear him again be like, no, silent, like turn it all off. And I'm like, okay. And I turn it and I'm driving in silence for a second. And I literally hear him go, this is the root of all of your problems. Mm-hmm. This is where every bad habit, addiction, sinfulness, lust, provocativeness, like everything that I struggle with starts with the music that I listen to. Mm-hmm. And I literally like... I knew God was saying to me, you can sit there in prayer all day long, reading the Bible all day long. You spend literally 60% of your day doing that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, but the other time you spend listening to this garbage. And so it's like, it all goes out the window. And I knew in that moment, like I have to do something. So I went, I did a week with no secular music. What were you listening to? Morgan Wallen? I was listening. Yeah, I was still listening to country, but like not as, not as, not even as much like I was trying to really only listening worship. to worship mm-hmm. when I tell you I literally felt a connection to God that I haven't felt in a long time mm-hmm. I could hear him again and I can always hear him but it really stuff like that will it like muddles it like I can't it's not as clear it gets really cloudy I was hearing God so clearly that in any given situation I didn't even have to pray about it I just knew I knew what to do I knew what he wanted from me I knew what the right thing was and it wasn't hard can you believe that something like secular music that nobody would think about has that much of an effect on you yes it's so spiritual I don't watch I love scary movies psychological thrillers is my favorite thing to act in Mm mm-hmm which is something we can talk about because Mm -hmm. people, you know, I've been on American Horror Story and almost everything that I've done has been a thriller or scary or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, It's my favorite thing to act in. It's my strength. It's what I'm best at. And it's my favorite thing to watch. And I can't watch it anymore. Mm -hmm. I know that like whatever's going on in there is coming into here and it's really, it affects me. Like the visuals will stay with me for a while. It's really hard. And then I can't go to the bathroom by myself and I have to sleep at your house. Like it's, it's, it really is Especially important. Especially those performances too. They're so demonic. I can't oh, even believe it. Yeah. Like the Sam Smith. I didn't what, see that one. Did you not watch that? No. It, he literally got on stage with devil horns and he was doing some like di- it was and then that's cool in today's culture. I can't believe that's why we have to. You know what's so funny about that is like, pe- so many people <laughs> when uh, we're saying like, oh my, like he's so brave. Like, you're literally going up there and doing exactly what Hollywood is asking you to do. There's nothing brave about that. Nothing. Go up there and like say an Our Father prayer or something, <laughs> and I'll think you're brave. Like, don't. <laughs> you're literally going up there being like, I'm on your side and doing what you want. Like, it's. And this is the thing about dressing up as the devil or glorifying the devil even if say the devil's not even real Mm -hmm. what does the devil represent nothing good nothing positive he represents evil and death and just why are we why even if he's not real why are you sending that message out and then calling it brave i don't understand i can't answer that because i am i can't believe i mean it's in cartoons now yeah it's it is it is bad right now so that's why we have to really keep our eyes open on what we're watching and what we're listening to ask god for discernment ask him to show you the spirit behind everything that's what i do and i can see it literally from a mile away because everything is pushing an agenda or pushing something onto you not to get really conspiracy but like everything is we just have to be careful yeah i'm not saying you know that you can't live your life and become you know live in a under a rock and like not listen to anything you just be aware of it and be aware of like how things make you feel Mm -hmm. because i know when i watch or listen to certain things i can feel afterwards i'm like like my spirit is disturbed yeah and on the topic of spiritual stuff and demonic stuff let's talk about going to the club and i really want you to tell the story about when you were in miami and what you felt oh yeah i was telling angie this i was in my i was in devil city miami and vegas i think yeah 
Miami, yeah. It can also be very relaxing, though. So, yeah, I was in Miami with my 22-year-old cousin. She dragged me to live. For anyone that doesn't know, it's a nightclub. You went to the club? Go and look love. <laughs> Girls Sipping gone on the Bible. Bible. <laughs> All right. So... I go in there and I can't even tell you, I had such spiritual warfare. Yeah. I was panicked in there. I mean, when, okay, so basically when you get really close to God, you can see things that you couldn't see before. And it, I just saw such darkness. Mm-hmm. It was, it was bad. I ended up having a complete panic attack praying in the club in the middle of the club just putting my head down i'm like jesus please get me through this i ended up leaving right away but yeah even the clubs it's dark man i'm telling you cut that out um i had to go to vegas for a work thing last at the end of the last year and i have to go to vegas for work sometimes and i absolutely hate vegas you literally walk in there and i'm like ah there's something wrong here sorry not to like s-h-i-t on vegas but i had to go out one night and i don't go to parties i don't drink so like i'm not like what do i what am i gonna do at a party what um, do you mean what are you gonna do you don't remember when we went out a couple weeks ago <laughs> all right <laughs> what is you want me yo you want me to start exposing you one of our friends go yo does she drink <laughs> <laughs> she's having more fun than anyone up in this place <laughs> i do have fun it's not um, a bad thing no i mean but like I- i'll go out i'll go out with my friends but not to a club not to something like Man, that it's just if you want to have a good time go out with Ange. we have a good time we really do <laughs> um but i went out i had i had to go out and i was at I, my spirit was so unbelievably disturbed this night in Vegas that I was sick. Mm -hmm. I was looking around and I felt like God had, I don't know, given me different eyes to see things. Like I felt like I saw, it was, um, this is really bad, but I felt like it was, instead of seeing people, I was seeing like demons everywhere, like literal demons, like people so under the influence, so messed up, like so on so many drugs, people doing all these drugs in front of me. And I'm just sitting there like, and listen, I I live in LA I've grown up I've lived a lot of different lives I've seen a lot of stuff it's not I don't even get affected by that stuff anymore but like I this specific night I was like this is so bad Mm -hmm. I was looking around being like yo Jesus is gonna come back and drown you all not me though he's taking me with him but like it was really bad (laughs) and you leave feeling so sick I felt like I had the flu I know well yeah because it's so it's just all that energy everyone's so effed up and like especially when you're drinking and doing drugs and stuff like that you know you literally leave yourself completely open to the enemy to come like you Absolutely. have no armor whatsoever like you may as well invite him in because that's what you're doing when yeah. you when you black out and you leave your body like that mm-hmm. um, anyways um jesus for dummies i also want to touch upon sermons because we got a question on could you name some of your favorite sermons and resources of books yes. and sermons and stuff yeah go ahead you know all the that that stuff um for me what really helped me was a sermon his name was Stephen Furlick he was just so easy to listen to when I knew nothing about faith and I would just listen to him when I was in a really really dark place in my life this past year um he helped me so much I I almost he changed my life Mm. um and then Torre Tori Roberts. Tori Roberts. He's the best. Angie and I started going to Potter House. It's a really great church in L.A. And he is the most incredible pastor. Mm-hmm. Um, it's life-changing. If you live in L.A., I would really recommend going to Potter's House. It's, you know, so grounded in biblical truth, everything that he says, while also being very inspiring and, like, moving and so delivering. Real. Yeah, and sometimes you oftentimes I feel like you almost have to choose with pastors it's like either you get a feel-good inspiring message or you get something that's like about Jesus and changes you and and convicts you and slaps you in the face and that's the type of church that I like and Torre is able to do both of those things oh he's so moving I would say uh, T.D. Jakes is one of my favorites yeah Bishop Bishop (laughs) (laughs) Bishop he's amazing why don't you share I love this story. I think we talked about it in our last podcast, but I just love when you tell this story because Angie struggled with confidence and being bold, and now she's literally the 
I look up to her so much for her confidence and how bold she is. And um, why don't you share that sermon that you would listen to? Yeah, Sarah Jakes Roberts. I would oh, that's her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. You know, <laughs> thank you, though. <laughs> no, I would listen to her. And she, I mean, she's really, um, she just, she will help get you out of a bad, bad spot. I struggled for a little while after I got sober. I um, was just dealing with a lot of anxiety. I had to, it was almost, it took me a long time to kind of come back into my body. I was mm-hmm. really living in on autopilot for a while, like, After I stopped drinking, I probably didn't laugh seriously for like a year almost. Yeah. Can you imagine me not laughing? My body was like literally in survival mode. And so I was just a shell of, even after I stopped drinking, I was a shell of a person for a while. It it took a minute and I started listening to her and her words were just, she would just basically be like, do you know who God is? Do you know who your savior is? Mm -hmm. Like get up. She has a sermon out there called get up. And if I think guys and girls can listen to it, but especially if you're a girl who's you're struggling with, you know, not feeling like yourself, not feeling good enough, not feeling bold enough or strong enough. Mm -hmm. Listen to that. It's life changing. Mm -hmm. Um, Some books that I love. um, There's a book called, Um, The Bait of Satan, that is phenomenal. It talks all about how it's really bad to take offense to things, and I think that'd be really good for the time that we're living in right now. Yeah. Um, I'll put more resources. I have so many books at home. I'll put them all. uh, More Than a Carpenter is such a good book about Jesus. Um, I'll put them all in the bio, and and we can do it like that. But the first book that you should read is the Bible. Yeah, I think it's so hard for people to know where to start, especially when they're in just such a bad place. I mean, the both of us, we were down so bad. I was so extremely heartbroken to the point where I couldn't even get up out of bed and go take a shower. Can you? Okay. All right. I really want you to tell this story and I don't want us to get off track. So one of the questions that we got is someone wanted us to talk about our views on the women like Mary Magdalene. We love Mary Magdalene. We love her. Can you, so let me t- give a little backstory about Mary Magdalene. She is one of Jesus's like right hands um, in the Bible. Mary Magdalene was really, really tormented and messed up with a lot of demons at the time. And the high priest used to mm-hmm. come and try to deliver her from these demons and nothing would happen. And if the high priest couldn't do it, clearly nobody could. So everybody thought she was a lost cause. Um, and then one day she met Jesus seriously in person and he went and he put her hands on her head and said, you are mine. Yeah. And he, she, he, he called her by name. He said, Mary Magdalene. And she mm-hmm. turns around and goes, how do you know my name? And then he went and put her hand. His, it's so, it's so cute. It wrecks she me struggled every for so long and she just couldn't understand why she couldn't get out of it. Can you tell um, the story? And then so we, when Ari and I first became friends, we spent a week. I slept over your house almost every yeah. single night. We were both down bad at that time. <laughs> and uh, I spent, and we watched The Chosen every yeah. single night together and fell asleep on the couch. And that's when we learned, we learned about Mary Magdalene. And can you tell the story about the shower? Yeah, I would, my safe place was the shower. I would <laughs> I just sit in there and just pray. And I just, that's where I would go when I was heartbroken. And I would have Angie sit outside the shower (laughs) because we were inseparable (laughs) and she would just talk to me and so I was in the shower and I was like Ange I was like do you think Jesus will save me like he did Mary Magdalene (laughs) I know and I was like just ask him Mm-hmm. Just ask him to, and, and she, that he did. And you close your eyes, and they, oh my God, it could make me cry. You literally go, Jesus, will you please heal me the way you healed I mean, Mary Magdalene? Yeah. Yes. And he came, and he did. He absolutely. I was did. telling her last night. I, I, these are the conversations that we have together. I was looking at you, and I was like, Do you know who you've? become since I've met you like yeah. you've always been the Ari that I love but you are like I'm not saying that you don't have problems but you kind of don't have pro you don't struggle with anything I have so much joy and peace in my heart and that's what God will do he will bring you to the people that you're supposed to be close with and they will help you get close to Jesus and then heal you I love you so much yeah it's been the one of the greatest honors of my life watching your walk with god thank you and it inspires me so much my girl 
I know how hard it probably is for some people to like just get up and do it. But I promise you, open the Bible, just Mm. walk into church, just get on your knees, pray. Yeah. And then I promise you just from there, everything will come that every God will take care of the rest. Ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. Trust me. Seek and you will find. Absolutely. Knock and the door shall be open to you. Call on Jesus. Call in the name of Jesus. He will do the rest. You you don't even have to do anything. Just pray. Ask. I love you, Jesus, so much. He's the best. He is so cute. Um, let's talk about this. Hmm. How to discern God's voice and will. Let's talk about God's voice because I think this oh, is something that really. I love this. I know. I love him. Oh, I love him. We're so lame. We're, so, we're freaks. Morgan, I, I'm the are, biggest do you think we're freaks? Yeah. All right. Yeah, no. Oh, sweet. God's voice. I Which, love it so much. When you tap into that, man. Can I tell you the first time I... Okay, so when people think of, like, God's voice, everyone, it's different for everyone. What do you think when you, when, you, when you think of hearing God's voice? What is that like for you? Well, I never trusted myself with anything. You know, when you met me, I was like, eh, do I do this? What do I do? Uh, yeah. I was so indecisive all the time. But when you really, not to go back to this, but when you start reading the Bible and God's word and really do the work, he you will hear him so loud Mm -hmm. you just you can just hear that voice in your heart and you will know exactly what to do amen for me hearing god's voice is almost like i it's not like i hear a voice that's different than mine i it will come to me as a thought and i will know that it's god because oftentimes the thought will go against what i as angela want Mm. and that's how you know it's from god um, or it's almost like something is downloaded into my subconscious. Like I just, I, I will not know something. And then all of a sudden I'll have a deep knowing and understanding of something. Mm-hmm. I think I remember the first time I really, that I remember hearing God's voice for real. I'm sure I heard it throughout my life, but the first time I could really pinpoint it was I used to go into this little crystal shop <laughs> by my house and I used to go buy sage and crystals and blah, blah, all the stuff. And I remember I there were these like little sculpture like what are they called like little statue things of all these different gods right there's only one god his name is Jesus sorry um there are all these little gods and there was like god of money god of whatever and I saw like probably a god of money one and I went to go grab it and I literally got stopped in my tracks I'm like and then I hear all I heard was no you don't need that you don't need that. Yeah. And I literally so I literally go, okay, yep. I don't need that. Yeah. And that, that was the first time I ever remember being obedient to mm-hmm. something and being like, oh, I'm not. And I didn't even know that that's an idol. At the time, I wasn't even reading the Bible like that. So I didn't even know that that is bad and we're not supposed to worship stuff like that and mm-hmm. whatever. Um, that was the first time. And then some. OK, so at the end of last year, I went through. A breakup and it was kind of hard and I was you know not happy obviously and like I am so good at getting addicted to things that it's impressive like I give me anything and I'll probably get addicted to it I love like things to help me sleep I love melatonin I gave up melatonin for Lent actually and I'm not taking and I haven't taken anything since but like I will if I have used to have trouble sleeping, I would take NyQuil or something. Mm-hmm. And so I was taking NyQuil for a couple of days. And then all of a sudden, I like was taking NyQuil every night to go to sleep um, because I felt like I needed it. And I remember I had at the end of this bottle, it was, you know, it's NyQuil and it was a couple, it was like max two weeks that I was doing it, but it's still not good. And I don't need it at the end of the day. Like God will put me to sleep. I don't need to be taking anything. Mm -hmm. And so I go into my bathroom and there was only a little bit left. And I go like this, I go to reach for it and literally everything in my body stops me. And I heard God so clearly be like, don't drink it. You don't need it. You will go to sleep. I'll help you go to sleep. Break this habit with me right now. Let's break it together. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there with my hand out. If anyone saw me, I would have looked crazy. I'm sitting there with my hand out and I'm wrestling with God. And I'm like, but I, okay, God, but, and like going back and forth with him. And ultimately I drank it still. And I was disobedient. And I was so sad afterwards because I was just like, I'm so sorry. Like I heard you and I went against it. And it's, 
and it's okay like he's not mad and yeah. I and I and I didn't have any more after that but like in that moment I was like what a blessing it is to hear God's voice and then to ultimately not be obedient to it is insane it's it's the most incredible thing because like I said I was the most indecisive person I did not know how to make decisions Angie can second that right you I did you're well, like <laughs> go ahead. no go ahead no go ahead I it's she would uh, initially make the right decision because your gut is right and you are such a smart girl and like I will go to you for advice you're the number one friend I'll go to because I trust you I trust your mind I trust your intellect and so I would see you make the right decision and then go back on it and, then, and then ask five people for their opinion <laughs> and I'd be like don't who cares what they think you know what's up you know what to do like but now it's like the voice is so loud yeah I don't have to ask anyone for anything but the, and that's the thing with trusting God is when you trust God you ultimately will trust yourself that's right you know what I mean mm -hmm. my God I love him so much I could go on and on and on about him how to remain firm in your relationship with Christ even when you're experiencing trouble well you and I trouble like spiritual warfare warfare anything just bad things are happening in your life and you know you trust God and then all of a sudden a family member gets sick or you lose your job or someone walks out of your life I I'm a firm believer that life is hard yeah you know it's never easy here it's it's always going to be a roller coaster ride but if you have God in your life and you have faith and you I mean you just it all works out for the greater good. I always think that the sooner you accept this, the sooner you'll be happy. And it's that suffering is a part of life. You're never going to get away from mm -hmm. it. You're never going to escape it. Bad things are always going to happen mm -hmm. to you. So just ride it. That's you, the only option that you have. And I think when your walk with Christ gets longer and you've progressed in it and, and you've been in it with Jesus for longer you have more experience with it and it's so it's easier to trust like where I'm at now I've just been through too much with God to doubt him and I do have my moments where I doubt him mm -hmm. it's really hard when a family member needs Jesus and they need saving or there's another area that you're so helpless in and you need God to come through and because God answers my prayer so quickly there are times where I'm like, I, I know that you can answer this. I know that you can come through for me right now, and I really need you to. And there are moments where he doesn't answer things the way that I want him to mm -hmm. or in the time that I want him to. And those are the moments where I'm like, I've seen this play out before. I've seen every moment in my life that I thought was so bad. I've seen him come through and work it together. Maybe not right away. But he does eventually. Yeah, always. And so mm. with that knowledge, with what it says in his word, that he does work all things together for our he good does. and for his glory. And whatever the enemy meant for evil, he will turn for good. I believe him when he says that. Mm -hmm. I really, truly do. And I have my life experience to back it up. So in the midst of a really bad situation with tears streaming down my face, I look up at the sky and say, Jesus, I trust you still. God, I trust you still. Mm -hmm. This situation is bad, but you are good. And just because my circumstances are not looking the way that I want them mm -hmm. to does not mean I'm abandoning you now because mm -hmm. you've never abandoned me. You will get through it. I mean, you will. And you know what? I want to be real for a second <clears throat> and not even do the whole like positive thing because I'm just thinking about how like there are times where we're not going to understand God and we're not going to mm -hmm. understand what's happening. And I know there's stuff in my life right now as we speak that like I can come on and do all right yeah we can do the whole like you know God will work it out and he will he will but there are times where you literally have no choice but to trust him yeah because there actually is no other option and that's where people come up with the questions of like well why does God allow suffering in the world or whatever after Adam and Eve, because we are born in Adam and Eve's bloodline, sin entered the world through one man and it infected all of us after him, whether you know we're born with it, whether we've sinned or not in our lives. And so because of that, bad things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. God's promise is that he's going to be with us through it. So I hope that that gives you a little bit of comfort. And this is the thing about prayer too, is that 
don't just pray that God will change your circumstance around you. Pray that he changes you, you. and your <clears throat> reaction to it. Because he might not be able, not that he can't, but like he might not change your circumstance, but he can change the way that you're looking at it. He can give you peace through it. Yeah. If I didn't go through everything I went through this past couple years, I would not be here right now. I would not be this person that I am right now. Oh, I know. And what did, what did we read this morning? I want it. Perseverance. Yeah, I, okay, so funny that we say that because this morning we were reading the Bible and I said, God, what do you want us to read? He said, Romans 5. And I remember we read this. Romans 5, 3 to 5. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. Yeah. We have to suffer. It is where we grow. It's where the magic actually happens. Yeah, I mean, if I didn't go through all of that pain of losing my stepdad and the and the heartbreak I did this year, I wouldn't be able to help the people I have be the person I am. There's power in our testimony, I know. It's, it's just, yeah. Um, and there are days, I mean, I called you the other day, and I'm like, Ange is why don't I have the answers that I I, I still don't have the answers no. I still I I've prayed for, for a year now for for answers that God still hasn't answered for me yet and honestly I've gotten to the point though that I'm like there's beauty in not knowing I don't need to know everything yeah. I really don't that's where that's what faith is you know we faith we have we hope is, for things unseen like we yeah. don't know and that's okay and yeah, and when he doesn't give you the answers, I feel like he that's a test. Yeah. How strong is your faith? Do you trust me? That's so true. That was good. Um so but I but yeah, we're going to talk more about all this. My the re, I'm so strong about struggles and heartbreak and just people that are hurting because I went through so much of that. Mm -hmm. So I really want to keep talking upon that because I know there's so many people struggling, just heartbroken, hurt, down bad. Yeah. And we really, I hope we can be voices for those people and really help them because if it's anyone who understands, it's us. <laughs> the alcoholism, True. the just, I went through so much mental health issues and... Yeah. God has really cured us in so many ways without medicine, just by prayer and trusting and having faith. So we really hope that we can. We'll keep talking about we it. We should do a whole episode on mental, mental health. health for sure. Really quick. Let's um, let's talk about new age spiritualism really quick. OK, so my I'm going to let you kind of take the reins on this because you're I feel like you're better at this. Um, for me, what works is Jesus. Um, I believe that if you're a good person, believe it, as long as you believe in something, you know, then okay. I think that that's okay. As long as you believe and you have something to believe in, um, take it away, Ange. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just think <laughs> it's okay. No. You can be real. I'm drinking Nesquik. Um, I got that for her last night because she was mad at me, so I stopped and got her some chocolate milk to butter her up. Listen, tarot readings, crystals. Let me tell you something. So oh, I, the tarot I'm, readings. That's, that's I, thought what, I thought we were talking about the universe stuff. Oh, that too. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, listen. So um, I'm Albanian, right? I'm Eastern European. We grew up going to psychics like I was five I years too. old my mother who is a true God-fearing woman woman had no idea that that was wrong that's why reading the Bible is important um she we would go to psychics my whole life it wasn't until a couple years ago that I was like I was so convicted by God that I, this is wrong first of all God is God and if he wants to give somebody um, the gift of prophesying or seeing things or, you know what I mean, that's, that's his to give. We cannot go outside of him to look for someone to tell us what's going to happen in the future. It's wrong. It's a sin. It's bad. You give someone the permission to 
it's prophesying over you but to do a tarot reading or to predict the future and they say some crazy thing to you like you're gonna die in 30 years because of cancer and, and then it happens right and then you and then you it happens and you're like oh they were right yeah. no actually they literally prophesied that over you and then yeah. it came true you yeah, gave them the permission mm -hmm. and when you know mediums and you know angel whatever this stuff is like the only spirit that you want to talk to is the holy spirit and Absolutely. i'm so firm on that and like if you call yourself a christian and you wear a cross around your neck that is the one thing i'm telling you don't play with it's not okay and like you see everything else i'm a little bit like i get it like we all no you cannot be dealing with stuff like that. oh yeah no and i want to ask you something yeah when you used to go to the psychics did you ever feel like bad things were happening to you because you let in that demonic spirit. A hundred percent. So many bad things were happening in my life when I would go to these psychics. Guys, stay so far away from them. I didn't know we were going on the tarot card <laughs> reading it's topic. Bad. It is so bad when you see that. There is so much of that on TikTok too. Yeah. Block that. Oh, I press it, not interested every time it, it comes up. It is so incredibly dark, you guys. And it also, it's not true. And they'll be talking to you. They'll be like, yeah, he's coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> yeah. like, you okay? <laughs> no. I, and uh, when they talk about like your spirit guides, those oh, are demons. Yes. Those aren't your friends. It's all dark. You don't want to talk yeah, to them. Yeah, that's bad. And like demons are, get, like they do have abilities and powers and mm -hmm. the ability to see things and whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. The only power that you want to be dealing with is God. I love you. Seriously, please don't do that. All right? Trusting in believing in God's timing. Yes. Guys. Take it away, sister. I did not understand. <laughs> I was like, what, what, what? Okay, first of all, I'm just going to be completely honest here. I cannot wait for the day that I'm a wife and a mother. You're going to be the best. I just, that. I fantasize about it all the time. I'm you like, know that's from God, right? That dream that you have to be a yeah, wife and a mom course. and it's beautiful and should yeah. be celebrated. Yeah. And so I obviously thought I was going to be married and be a mother a while ago. And that didn't happen. So now I'm here with my beautiful best friend doing a podcast. But um, for this past year, I'm like, I'm watching everyone around me get engaged and get married. And they're, they're in their beautiful homes with their husbands. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that's where I would be right now. Yeah. But now that it's coming to the end of the year, I can see why. And guys, trust in his timing. Mm. He is never too late. Mm -hmm. Trust me when I tell you that. I now know why I'm not married or I don't have children yet. Yeah. It will all come when it's supposed to. He is never late. That is the best thing I've ever heard. He really isn't. I have such an unshakable faith in his timing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're looking at me like that. I love you. <laughs> me too. The one thing that I really had to learn this year was just faith. Yeah. I wish you, like you guys, faith. I had not even an ounce of faith. Mm -hmm. When I learned faith, that's when I was just like, all right. You sit back. I hear you. Yeah. Your timing, not mine. Mm. It is not on my time. It is on your time. And I'm going to have faith and I'm going to trust you. And that is when everything started coming in my life. How, why are in we going to... In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. How are we going to trust our own timing? We don't know what we're doing. We, we don't know what we're talking about. There. I can he see, knows what's up. I can see him right now. Do you think he... Guys. Do you think he loves you. us? <laughs> I love He's him. He's so cute. <laughs> Somebody asked how you deal with comparison and jealousy. And you and I both, listen, I'm just going to say it. I'm, I'm not saying this to pat ourselves on the back. Neither of us deal with either of these things. I know for me, like, I don't have that competitiveness with other women, like, mm. at all. 
I don't, and I think it has to do with the fact that, like, my mom growing up, my mom doesn't have a jealous bone in her body, and mm-hmm. so I always had a role model who, like, loved other women, mm-hmm. and she just was, ne- like, she wants to see everybody do well, even if she doesn't know them, even if she doesn't like them. So th- I grew up with that, and I also look at it like this. If if somebody is being blessed, if they have a good and perfect thing in their life, that's a blessing from God. How could I be jealous of what God is doing in somebody else's life? You know what I mean? That's right. Like, if it's a win for them, it's a win for God. And if it's a win for God, it's a win for me. Absolutely. I know that's really corny, but no, like... No, it's, it's the truth. It's how I feel. What, how, how could I... Uh, what, what do I... And why would I be jealous? It doesn't make any sense. There's there, And there's room for everyone. There's literally room for everyone. everyone. And you have to remember that people... Other people have nothing to do with you. Like I, and I genuinely mean this, like a beautiful woman walking in the room simply just doesn't make me feel any less beautiful. No. Because she has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. She doesn't take away from anything about me and I don't take away from anything about her. And beauty is more than just a beautiful woman walking in the room for me. As I, as I got older, I just realized how much more it is. What is your heart like? Mm -hmm. Are you know, it's it's so much more that's why i don't ever compare myself to anyone either because i know my heart i know what i have to offer and it's way more than having good hair and nice lips and yeah you're the best you know (laughs) all right you guys this episode was an absolute (laughs) blank show because i had (laughs) no our guests didn't come and then we were like well here we go all right we love you guys so much so much we're gonna end it by saying the thing we always say read the bible it's the most important thing start and read the gospels romans is the best have faith trust in god's timing he knows what's up um and we love you guys so much listen and we're gonna put those sermons in the yeah we'll put everything in in the the bio yes and just never forget that jesus loves you all right thank you guys love you guys so much girls gone bye bye